Hello mis amores and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great. I hope you're having an amazing day. And today I was too lazy to do my hair so now we've got this situation. But it turns out that putting this thing on my head properly almost took me longer than doing my hair. And I'm not even happy with this result, so... <laughs> Let this be your lesson. Whatever you want the lesson to be. Ding! Well, so anyway, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're gonna do a video that we've already done before. Obviously we're not gonna do the same exact video again, but the concept of it will be the same. Why do I always wanna be so secretive? Especially when the title gives all of my secrets away already. Yes, you guys have guessed it right. Today we're gonna make another three meals, three countries video. Ooh! I, I, I need to rebrand this video concept. One day, three meals, three countries. Oh my god, that's so dramatic almost. When I first did this, some of you guys have made some suggestions and I welcome you guys to leave some more suggestions under this video for recipes that you guys want me to see. Obviously, I'm not an outfit repeater, even though I am, and this also has nothing to do with outfits. I was searching for recipes from different countries under the last video. I found Found some hopefully great recipes and I'm excited to make them. It is time for breakfast now. Well, yes, I had breakfast already, but I'm craving a late breakfast, okay? So let's travel to... I've actually totally forgotten what we're gonna make. For breakfast, we're gonna travel to South Africa. Ooh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> I wish I was in South Africa right now. I'm always so surprised when I remember that South Africa is actually in the same time zone as Germany because it's just so far away, but obviously it's in the same time zone. It makes sense. So I've read a comment by Sky Marie. Hi, I'm from South Africa, so can you please try Bobochi? Bobochi? Mm -hmm. So several websites say it's babuti, others say babuti. Boboti. Boboti. That is wrong. All of the comments say it's wrong. Okay, the comments say it's babortai. Well, anyway, turns out it's a well-known South African dish consisting of spiced minced meat baked with an egg-based topping. Uh, meat? We're not gonna do that. Instead, as Tiaza wrote under that comment, I was going to suggest the same thing, but he should also try malva pudding or peppermint crisp tart. We're gonna make the pudding. It's probably not a breakfast. I often eat last night's dessert for breakfast because I need something sweet for breakfast. I think this counts as a breakfast for me. Let's start making the malva pudding. So what is malva pudding, you ask? It is, I answer, by the looks of things, a sort of cake-like thing that you put in the oven and once it's out the oven, you pour a sauce on top and then it becomes really like Spongy. So to make the malva pudding, you're gonna need 150 grams of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, five grams of baking powder and a pinch of salt, 150 grams of butter, 100 milliliters of milk, a teaspoon of white wine vinegar, 200 grams of powdered sugar, two eggs, and a tablespoon of apricot jam. That's my favorite, actually. That is just for the cake butter, okay? Don't forget, don't forget. Preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius if you feel like doing that. I never do that. It's baking, baking, baking time. You're gonna need a bowl. Hey! Into this bowl we're gonna sift flour and the baking soda powder and salt. Nice, nice, nice. A smaller bowl and in this bowl we're gonna, do I have to sift this as well? Put the powdered sugar. I hate sifting powdered sugar, it always takes forever. We're gonna mix the powdered sugar with the two eggs. A little bit of crunch. Do we like the crunch or do we want to get rid of the crunch? Luckily I sifted the powdered sugar, it was totally necessary. <laughs> Now let's add the apricot jam. Uh, now we fold in the flour mixture into this. Wowie! I'm quickly gonna melt the butter because the butter needs to be melted. <laughs> well, it turns out that the business is happening over there, so we're gonna move. 
So we're still just uh, melting butter. So much butter. Okay, butter is melted, which means we can add the white wine vinegar. And now we can add the milk while stirring. Don't let it boil. How long do I have to do this for? I turned off the heat so we can move on back over here. And lastly, little by little, we can add our butter mixture to this mixture. As I think you can tell already, this is going to be a really runny batter. According to the recipe, it's supposed to be similar to a pancake batter. This is done! Now we need an oven dish. We need to grease it. Oh, I hate this. Now that the entire kitchen is greasy, we can pour in the batter. Our oven dish might be a little big. It's just the life we're living. This is the life we're living. Oh, I need to order something real quick. We can finally continue. I've got aluminum foil. Because we're gonna have to cover our cake with aluminum foil. Now this goes into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes. See you in just the cut. I took the pudding out of the oven and now we can make the sauce. With a toothpick I also picked into the top of the cake a couple of times so that the sauce will be easier to absorb. For that sauce you're gonna need 200 milliliters of milk, 100 grams of soft butter, 150 grams of yes even more sugar and 100 milliliters of warm water. Now we're gonna go over there and just cook it basically. And over here what can I say we're just gonna dump all of the ingredients for the sauce in here and heat them up but we won't bring this to a boil we're just gonna let it heat up I guess no boil allowed wow this is so um, exciting I'm gonna tell you guys nothing but the truth this sauce does not look like in the picture why did we put water into this hello lovely people hello lovely play hello lovely play blue blue I've got my questionable sauce I'm told to pour it over our cake oh oh okay take it all in bitch mm, guys this kind of looks really yummy or not i'm not sure it translates that well on camera <laughs> trust me it looks really tasty and it smells very good wow damn that was a really long night i slept for so long i'm gonna have breakfast at 4 p.m <laughs> oh interesting texture oh it's so soaked it looks good to me I can't tell if this looks legit and stuff oh wow we mmm holy shit at first I was afraid I was petrified kept thinking this is way too sweet I'm never gonna survive but then I spent a couple of seconds more thinking how good this really is okay let's just this tastes so fucking good just listen to this to this this is the sweetest thing i've ever eaten i've eaten in a long time but it's also one of the best things i've eaten in a long long time this is so good guys it tastes so caramelly i mean i'm guessing all of the sugar caramelized <laughs> it tastes so similar to biscoff cream guys i could eat this whole lot no i couldn't is it breakfast cake i don't think it's actually breakfast oh this have been hot nice very sweet. I wouldn't eat it for breakfast though. Yes, South Africa. You did that. Alrighty, well, Schmarty. So that was South Africa. I'm wondering when will I ever be in South Africa? And also, why am I not in South Africa right now? Anyway, it's lunchtime. And for lunch, we're gonna make something that I think is typical for breakfast in another country that we're gonna fly to right now. If only. I actually have no idea how to pronounce the country in English. So my guess is... Medley, looking at the world from rose-colored glasses I found in you may be strutting with some Balbica high society everybody loves my baby from Billy Bond from Apple Music. That was such a long title. So my guess is Azerbaijan. That's a bad guess. Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Yeah, well, that's where we're gonna fly to. We're gonna fly to Azerbaijan. Oh, that was wrong again. We're gonna fly to Azerbaijan. Azer 
Yeah, me neither, girl. Me neither. The lovely Ramila. Ramila? Sorry. Left a sweet, sweet comment under that last video in which she also gave me a recipe. The Azerbaijani food is called kutab. Kutab. It's basically dough filled dough. <laughs> this recipe seems really easy. I'm hoping it will be. Unless I completely fuck it up, this will be tasty, I'm sure. For the dough, you're gonna need four to five cups of sifted flour, one egg, a teaspoon of salt, and warm water, which I don't have here right now. But I'm gonna put it in the dough, because otherwise it won't make a dough. Flour does not dough make. And then for the filling, this is very interesting because I would assume that you'd put some sort of cheese in there or something like that, but it doesn't say so in this recipe. We're basically just gonna put the common set 10 bunches of greens. So in here I've got coriander, dill, spinach, mint, garlic, and parsley. Oh, I don't have onion in here yet, but I will add onion. I think we're gonna chop it up a little and we're gonna add a bit of salt and that is it. Then in the end, for serving, we shall need a bit of butter and also a bit of yogurt. So my lovely lads, we're gonna sprinkle some salt on top. Then we're gonna make a little bit of a mold because that is where we're gonna break the egg into. See, the thing is, I have no idea how much water we're supposed to add. Maybe I'm gonna start with like half a cup. Let's add the other half of the cup. Mmm, this seems good. Gonna add a bit more. This dough is perfect. Now we're gonna cover this and let this rest while we make the filling. Well, I actually already made the filling. <laughs> I mean, I told you all that we need and I just chopped it finely. I might need to chop some more stuff because I'm not sure this will be enough. Flour need it again. Now let's make this into about 12 equal pieces, okay? I've got eight pieces. Take some dough, sprinkle some flour on the table and on the dough as well and create a thin layer. I mean, I feel like it should be like rectangular-ish, just like this is right now. I wanna add the filling. On one half of the dough, let's spread this out evenly. Me thinks. So again, I feel like I would have added some cheese to it, but the recipe says no, no, no. We're just gonna fold it in half and shut this very close. Okay, I'll just keep doing that. <laughs> We're gonna fry them from both sides for about three minutes until they're golden brown. This is done. Gonna brush it with butter from both sides. Mm. Amazing. And we're done. This smells delicious. This smells like something you would get at like a market, street food stuff. Just look at it. I don't know about this one, but I think the other ones, they look really nice. All right, I've got some yogurt right here. Let's try this one. I think this is a good one. I don't think I have enough filling, but it's fine. Mmm. I should do this more often, I'm fucking dizzy. I feel a bit sick now, but I'm still gonna eat this food. Hallelujah, this is so yummy. I will say, and you saw it coming, I saw it coming, something's missing in that filling. Maybe my filling is not quite correct, but what about some feta? I think the texture and the flavor of the dough with the herbs is really, really great, but I think it could be perfect with a bit of a different filling. It's a bit tasteless. It's not my thing. It was definitely way better when it was hot. I just think it needs a bit spices, a bit of something, yeah. It's good with yogurt. Thank you guys so far. Thank you so much for these suggestions. That was amazing. You guys have to make this. This was also fairly easy, so you have no excuse. That said, I see you guys for dinner time. Welcome to dinner time with Vincento. Period. You guys don't know my last name. We're gonna travel to one of our, my neighbors. I've never been to that country, even though it's so close. And even though I used to know a lot of people from that country. Anyway, it's Poland. We're gonna go to Poland. Agata, under that last video, told me that I could do some Polish recipes. You live close to Poland. Maybe you even know some of our recipes. Actually, my best friend when I was younger always wanted me to try or <laughs> liked one Polish recipe in particular and I've always wanted to try it and I always told her like when your family or your mother makes 
makes it, please let me know and I'll be there in the next day or the day she makes it. She never she told, told me, me and I have yet to try it because I thought it was so interesting with what it's made. Isn't it made with like spoiled flour? Anyway, I'm talking about jurek. It's like a soup, I believe. I wouldn't know because I still haven't tried it. Some examples of great and delicious Polish food, pierogi, in parentheses, dumplings. I recommend those with cheese and potato fillings. That's enough because that's what we're gonna make. We're gonna make some pierogi. In my life, I have made a couple of dumplings as in ravioli and that's it. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good idea for me to make them with potato and cheese filling because I'm only now teaching myself to like potatoes, but I think we're gonna do it anyway. So for the dough, you're gonna need 300 grams of flour, 115 milliliters of water, one egg yolk, a bit of butter and a bit of salt as well. Okay, so we basically just put everything in there and knead it into a homogenous dough. I just read some more about the recipe and I think I got the wrong cheese. It's not my fault. I think this dough can uh, rest in the fridge for an hour now, I guess. Well, 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 guys. About 48 minutes later, Actually, almost 48 minutes later, I finally peeled all the fucking potatoes. We are ready to make the filling. The filling is also really straightforward, but here's what you need. 500 grams of peeled potatoes, 250 grams of cheese, one onion, and I'm actually gonna fry it real quick. And then just some spices and maybe herbs even if you like. And that's it already for the filling. What can I say, guys? Oh, hi, Naomi. <laughs> it is time to mash the potatoes. We do not want to blend the potatoes, but luckily Naomi's friend mm. <laughs> once got us a potato masher that... Mm. Have you ever used this? Yeah. Oh, what? I'm on. Let's add the onions. Oh. Pepper. Maybe some garlic powder. Some Italian herbs, <laughs> why not? Also adding the cheese now. This is more cheese than potato. Okay guys, yeah, it's dumplings. I think you can guess what the next step is. Look at these babies. Now it's time to seal them. Well, actually to fill them and then seal them. Apparently it is an art to close them properly. Let's hope we're good at this art. So let's take a nice one. Got a bit of filling here. Again, mine are really small, so I can't put a lot of filling in them. Oh my God, they're gonna be so tiny, I cannot. I could close them off like a empanada like fold them but I could also take a fork and do this like a ravioli I think that makes more sense wow that looks really good I guess I'll just keep doing this for the next hour or two hour with you why you bother me when you know you got a woman? I hope that this is correct. Well, I've made a bit of a mistake. Was it a mistake? I was just stupid. And that's why I made a mistake, okay. These ones look amazing. However, these ones are not all of them. There are a couple of ones left and I also have more than enough filling. I didn't cover them and I also wasn't quick enough. So that means that this dough is like super dry and it has this skin on top that just rips whenever you try and close it. So these are not usable anymore, which is a shame, but at least we've got a couple of good ones. And also, dare I just say, these look really good. I hope they're good. I hope they're nice. Because now we just gotta put them in boiling water and wait for them to rise to the top. That's when you know they're done, apparently. And at the same time, I will also fry onion in a lot of butter in another pan. Guys, we're done. I can't believe it. They're all still intact. I'm screaming, crying, sweating. Yeah. They're all still looking so well. Granted, they're a bit colorless. Anyway, <laughs> let's dive in. Here are our onions, <laughs> looking sad. And there you have my Polish pierogi. Wow, wow, wowzers. Mmm, mmm, nice. Mmm, I like this. The onions are really good with it, but the filling is also good. Mmm, yeah. I, I mean, all of my recipes were really good. I don't, I don't even have words in it. Like, I don't know what to say. What was your favorite? Oh, 
South Africa. That was just mind-blowing. I was really feeling that one. Maybe I'm a professional chef now. Like, I did not make a single mistake today. I did not struggle wow. a single time. Wow, I graduated. I graduated YouTube. <laughs> this is it. If there's one thing you need to take away from this video, it's definitely the South African recipe. The malva pudding. Superb, sublime. That was a long day, guys. We need to end this. Thank you so much to everyone for your suggestions, especially to the three ones that I've chosen to make today. Yes, thank you so much because these were all great. And that said, all that's left for me to say is thank you guys so much for watching this video. Y entonces nos vemos la próxima vez. Y bye.